Hello, people. My name is Sako, the comedy component of Imo. Thank you so much for joining this podcast. I will be speaking today on how to maximize mentorship. I'm a product of mentorship, and I can tell you to a reasonable extent what has helped me, the things that would have made me that I would have achieved in 20 years or I would achieve in 10 years. I got old and I took advantage of mentorship and I got them in two years because I I, I learned and I'm going to be sharing with you in this podcast the things you need to do. Most times people say I work with him for a while and I stopped working. People, because you at the beginning, you didn't set things right. Um, you It was a sponsor you need, you needed not a mentor. Most times, and I must let you know the difference between a mentor, a godfather and a sponsor. Okay, you need a mentor. A mentor will teach you. A men- mentorship or a mentor is someone that you that has more experience than you are. A mentor does not mean he's better than you are. Okay, but than you as a younger person. He simply means he has more experience. And I must let you know that mentorship sometimes you if you at this level that we are, your mentor you might be older than your mentor. You might be older than your mentor. The advantage is that he is more experienced than you are. And that's where people may say, how can I work with someone that I'm older than? If you need to work, if you need to learn the things that he knows, you need to submit yourself. So mentorship is it's mentorship, it's, it's a relationship between an, an experienced person in a field, in a particular industry, uh, to a younger person or to a less experienced person. And that's basically the difference. That's the difference. And the difference between you and the person is time. Because when you know the things that your mentor knows, um, one way or the other, it, and one thing that I know about mentorship is that the mentors in my life don't stop at where I met them. Every time I see them, there's something new about them. So before I'm going to share with you the things that is very important, why you need to, how you need to maximize the relationship. Because um, a lot of people have missed it. I almost missed it also at the beginning. But as I grew older, I realized that mentorship was important. So I have mentorship with different fields. I have mentors in marriage. I have mentors in finance, uh, mentors in different areas of my life because it's important that you have those mentors because the same mistakes, some mistakes that they did, you will have the opportunity of doing them again. It will be lesser for you. Okay, so um, let's go straight to the tips on, we have about five things how to maximize mentorship. Uh, people do not do what we call ceremonial, ceremonial mentorship, um, you know, in sense that they you feel you are in a mentorship with someone but you're not they says you, you go to meet somebody and say you want the person to meet, mentor you and then you're already taking pictures you're already posting my mentor that's not mentorship yes it could cause it could create an influence and say oh this if this person is related to this person or this person is submissive to this person it could it could create a little perception about you oh you will submit but the truth is you might not get the full advantage of mentorship if you just do pictures that's why lately one of the things that i do is i don't even take pictures with my mentors because i don't want it to look as if i came there to take pictures it's better that my mentors ask for the picture than me asking for a picture because that's not what i want to eventually what we make i would learn more things from this person and then in the long run when i take picture people will say oh no wonder no wonder i got this result so first you must before you choose a mentor you must sit down and check the core values of the person you want to work with does he work with does he have the same core values with you when i started comedy and i I was looking for a mentor the first person i saw that had the same core values that i had is a man called onimala i met him in a church in 2004 and i saw a man going an event and i said this man is already living my dreams his value system as a christian is very clean ethical you know the first gospel comedian in nigeria and then I said, this man was already leaving and I followed him. I oh, see, I sent him a mail that, that that same day. I got his email. I said, I don't know what, I don't know the content of what the email was, but I just said to him, my name is Sako. I'd like to work with you. I did, he didn't respond, but you know what? He didn't stop me. What I did was every time he had an event that I saw his flyer, I would go there. I would sit, uh, sit in the crowd, watch the way he does it, then the way he does it effortlessly. Because every time I went on stage that time, I was always, I was always shaking. I was always scared. But I see him do the things, and then I was working on myself. And then I got to admission to University of Lauren. I worked, I, you know, I said comedy professionally first of October. But I was working on myself. As I came back to Lagos, I went to a school to learn presentation skills to get better. Because it's important that your mentor meets you and see that you are also very 
very important. You also have value. Because what mentors, what makes a mentor bring you, apart from the fact that he wants to help you, he also wants to see that you're bringing value, value to the team. Because there are some things your mentors might not be able to do. And then it is important. These are ways, you know, that's how I got to meet him. And then I met him in 2008. At this time, I had worked on myself in 2004. And I could tell you, I could tell you, I could tell him some of the things I've learned in the past four years observing him. It's important that you observe and know the things that your mentor wants. The second one is you need to learn from this wealth of knowledge. You need to learn. You need to learn. And that's where learning involves observation. It is important that when you observe your mentor, like for instance, let me example, which you know you have parents. And I've done this example everywhere I go. Every time you've you've uh, growing up, you know the things your parents want, liked, and you know the parents the, the things your parents did not like. Yes or no? You know that when they are coming back and you are playing football, you need to go wash your leg, even though football now is the main thing right now, right? I wish they knew better, you know. But you know they just thought that people that play football were not. But now you know better that your leg you can even show your leg. But back then, when you see your parents, you know the sound of your father's car. You know and you run, you wash your leg or you as a lady you're preparing food for your dad or you make um you're making a bar for instance and then there's a muscle in the or oh, amala the, the father will scold you so every time you say you hear the word my father doesn't like this kind of he doesn't like he doesn't like you already know from observation some of them didn't come from observation some of them came from beating your father had to beat you he had to slap you i remember one time my father slapped me and everywhere it was in the afternoon everywhere went dark I kid you not, it was dark. In fact, they had to drag me into a shop because I couldn't see, you know. Because since then, by observation, I knew that my father's hand, I didn't want to get that slap again. It's important also. Now, oh, that's an lighter note. It's important that when you work with a mentor or you work with somebody that you admire, you know. And there's a place where if you're not careful, there's a place of see finish where you say, is this not the person I've been looking forward to? Now you know the person. You see the person. You now begin to see some wrongs about the person. You now realize it's important that you observe and focus on the positive side. And I say to you that please, if you're working with somebody, the job of a mentor is not to make you feel bad. Yes, your, your mentor is not supposed to begin to give you advice, begin to give you... Your mentor is supposed to give you options of what he feels about your craft and then he allows you to choose them it's not to dictate it's only when he's becoming you know that begins to tell you do this or some some at this level some mentors even collect money they tell you this is my mentorship fee but that's not how we started at the beginning it's you learn you need to learn what you need to learn and then be a blessing to other people you know it's important so, and then when you're working, working with a mentor find out the value you can bring to the table it is important. What value will you be bringing to the table? What are you going to? What skills do you have that will help this mentor you know, become a better person? I tell you, if the mentor has an opportunity to choose one or two mentor uh, proteges out of all his men, he will choose you. He will choose you because you, one way or the other, he found out or is 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 seen that you've been a blessing. And you know, I I, I give this example of of a well-known person in Nigeria. Um, someone like um, Mr. Fela Drotoy shared a story of how Steve, uh, Steve Harris reached, him, reached out to him and then offered from Yanokpaja to VGC where Mr. Fela Drotoy stays and he, he did a lot of things. He helped him convert, you know, audio cassette to, he, he just did, it was valuable to him. And now you don't want to know how how much Mr. <laughs> Mr. Steve is doing because he volunteered to be a blessing. He volunteered to serve. It is important that you do those things. Think of how you can bring value. What you do a, a background check on the person you want to mentor. Check how you can be a blessing. Because when you are meeting, you can send him a mail and say, "Sir, I've observed you for a while." When you do what I've observed you for a while, and you give him details of the things you observe about the person, he will respond to you, or he or she will respond to you. It's important that you do all those things. And then also, the next one is, the next one is go. Come, okay, um, choose a mentor with the same value, which I've, I've emphasized before, and go for their materials. Get their materials. If you have a mentor, it's, it's, it's really, really important that you even get their materials before you get to meet them. Because when you refer to their materials and say, sir, I read your book, 
um, in 2016 and you talk about this you even talk about the paragraph you talked about the chapters you, you could analyze the chapters the mentor and compared to someone that just says i want you to mentor me uh, and he just says why do you want to mentor? Uh, i see the things you are doing compared to somebody that says sir i observe in your book you released in 2016 chapter four the second stanza who do you think the mentor is going to give attention to He's going to give. And then I say to you as a protégé, don't be arrogant. Even when you reach out to your mentors and they don't respond to you, don't be arrogant. Trust me, he might be busy. He might be busy. And he also gives you an opportunity to be a better person by the time you meet the person. I tell you, I'm grateful to God that I didn't meet my mentor when I met him in 2004 or he didn't give me the opportunity. Because when he gave me the opportunity in 2008, it was like, it was a lifetime opportunity. He gave me my first 30K event gave my first 120k event gave my first 150k event at that time i'd empowered myself and that's why you must not be lazy i'd empowered myself my first event um, um that that gave me like all other platforms i've seen have introduced me on stage on my 10 years on stage i'm grateful to god for that relationship you know sometimes don't, don't be eager uh, if you know if you if you know mentor me somebody else will mentor you that's the truth but it means that you are not actually looking for a mentor. You're looking for somebody that you could take pictures with and then just jump up and down and show is my mentor. No. Mentorship is a lot. I'm sure you know you are still under mentorship with your parents if they're still with us. Even if you don't have a parent, you have somebody that you look up to that trained you. Mentorship still continues. Okay, it's important. Huh? Don't look for a sponsor. Look for mentorship because if you get all my life by the grace of God, I've not had the opportunity to say who's going to sponsor me because I I learned I learned very well from my mentors, and at the time I didn't need a sponsor. It's good for partnership. It's good that you get sponsors, you know. But at the same time, for your life, you know, my my mentor. It took my mentors years to get a UK visa, but because I was observant and he saw that I was observant, he began to share with me the things, mistakes he did that you know that didn't make him get his visa. And boom, my first application. In 2020, in 2012, I got my, my UK visa. You could say anybody can get it, but no, I learned. It taught me and I listened. Because you, like I said, your mentor is not going to force. No mentor, if a, if somebody begins to force something, it's, not, it's no longer a mentor, it's not a dictator. It's important, okay? Um, when we're back, I will share one more thing. Welcome back. We're still on uh, maximizing mentorship. And so... I, like I said, it's very important. I, I, I share, I, I listened to a man, I think Bishop Cole, and he talked about three important things about mentorship. I, I, I can't stop sharing it. And I talked about, remember, I mentioned the first one, I talked about observation. The other parts where from observation, you would need explanation. That's where you begin to ask questions from the mentor. You're asking him good questions. Not, sir, what's the size of your shoe? I like your shoe. Where did you get your shoe? That's not what you want to ask right now. Is you ask questions based on, based on, and and the fact, and I must say this. I read this from a book. The fact that your mentor is friendly with you doesn't mean he's your friend. Hold it to your hand. The fact that your mentor is friendly with you is not Ash. Doesn't mean he's your friend. So you don't begin to call or begin to store his name as his name. You must know whether that some people do not like it. Some people say, I don't mind. But if you know the culture or that where you where you belong in the, in, the, in in Outside the country, outside Nigeria, people do not mind you calling them by their first name, even though they are your mentors. But if you are in Nigeria, you can't call a professor and you call him Ad- Ademola and he says, oh, great, <laughs> you just got your 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 validity or your convocation, okay? It's important that you know how the person wants to be addressed. important that you know the temperament of the person. It's important that every time you're with your mentors, if you don't have questions, it will come. Another thing that I also say that if your mentor is having a conversation with somebody that is not your friend or you are not caught into the conversation, do not say anything. Even if you know anything about it, except your mentor says you should say something. I tell you the truth, a lot of people have missed it. Do not, do not. If the conversation, except it's an issue of life and death where you, you need to speak. But if you are not called into that conversation, please do not speak. Or you could take permission to say, you mind, I noticed this thing, I could actually bring it. So that's different. Okay? That's different. But when so, your mentor is talking to somebody, I say, yes, sir, that's what happened. That's all. You have just, you have just given yourself. Hallelujah. Okay, so it's important that you do. Do not converse if you're not called into. The other thing you should do also is do not, you know, when you hear 
when you hear informations that are not right about your mentor, don't amplify it. Your job as, as a protege is to help, is to protect your principal. I remember um, you know, somebody that, one of my mentors, you know, the person I was working with him, there was no information that I could get from him about my mentor. He says, I, I need to protect my principal. And it gave me, it made me understand that it's important. Don't share information. Your mentor shares some things with you that are that are confidential. You begin to share it, share it out and you now begin to start. And when you know, I maybe need to hear the words, I'm not supposed to say this. Don't say it. We are tired of, I'm not supposed to say this, but let me say, don't say it. If it has to do with confidentiality, you need to keep it to yourself. Okay? Um, I'm going to be sharing more. Uh, on this I have a strategic mentoring program where I share and I share my job is to just make sure that I share the things mistakes I share my mistakes what how I was able to come out from those mistakes how I became a better person I'm not part of you know I'm not going to be sharing the things that I've not done everything I'm sharing with you are the things I'm still submitting submissive to my mentor to date I, I, I basically if I get a call from there now to leave the podcast I will leave the podcast I hope you're able to learn one or two things. Thank you so much. I'd like to get your, your feedback. Um, you could send me a mail at spiritofsaco at gmail, spiritofsaco at gmail.com to let me know what you feel about it. Or you send me a direct message on Spirit of Sacco, um on Instagram or Sacco Initiative on Instagram. I just want to get to hear from you. Thank you so much. Uh, or, hello. <laughs>